Good evening, everybody. Hope everybody's having a nice what, fall evening. All right, I guess we'll get started. Uh, there's not too much I have to do to introduce Price. He is very well known. Uh, he's often on the CNBC, Fox News, and Bloomberg television. He's one of the founders, or is the founder, of the uh, BigTrends.com, which he's got good down-to-earth stuff and uh, usually provides uh, very good techniques for, for real-time stock and options strategies. So with that, uh, Price, welcome once again to the Candlestick Forum. We're anxious to see what type of info you can give us tonight. Well, thank you so much, Steve, and good evening, everybody, or good afternoon, or good day, as the case may be, from what part of the world you're logging into. Um, from I'm glad to have you with us. I'm in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, here in horse country, uh, and it is a beautiful fall evening, as Steve mentioned here. Um, now, you know, I know a lot to cover for you in this roughly an hour. You know, we'll try to keep it tight and really walk you through um, – the things that I look for in actual trading, you know, and what I did after uh, seeing how well this stuff had worked for me over time is I had a lot of questions from people saying, well, I'd like to look over your shoulder, Price. I'd like to actually watch how you trade. I'd like to see how you come up with ideas. And so that's what we're going to give you a little bit of an overview on tonight is how we do that and how you can participate that in that on a, on a weekly basis. I do that uh week after week after week, and so you can actually find a great way here tonight to get started and kind of get hooked. Uh, you know, we've got a very uh, compelling uh, intro offer that I think you're going to want to take advantage of. But first and foremost, it's going to be about easy methods to give you proper leverage. See, I'm not a big believer that you have to go for maximum leverage. If, it, if any of the history books that you read on Wall Street will talk uh, about the brilliant minds on Wall Street that flew too close to the sun, that ultimately, you probably experience this in your own trading, if you get too overconfident, have you ever noticed that the market will tend to fairly quickly take you back down a notch or perhaps even more than one notch, and it'll really humble you? And that's why I think it's important to always stay humble, to always stay very even in the markets. And some of you can relate to this feeling of the markets are or a humbling factor. And that's why I sought to really make it uh, something where it could be very simple. You wouldn't have questions on the techniques that I've developed about what an indicator is saying at any point in time. You know exactly where it is. And I actually coded it to actually tell me exactly where the buy signal was and where the sell signal was to actually then test it and see if it actually worked over a large sample of trades across a lot of different markets. Let me ask you all a quick question because I want to get you interacting too, and I'll try to leave some room at the end for Q&A questions too. How, what's your favorite vehicle that you're trading right now? Would you say you're trading equities, options, uh, forex, ETFs, uh, mutual funds, uh, you name it. Uh, I'm just always curious to see what everybody's into. So quite a few option traders. We have some equities, some forex, e-minis. Okay, so there's another one. You can pretty much apply this to just about all the techniques in the markets because the pattern tends to remain the same regardless of the trading vehicle. Sure, some markets have a little bit of different character, especially like in the agricultural futures where they can have some kind of a lock limit move and you get these kind of ratchet up effects almost overnight without any trading sometimes. But the reality is is that things in continuous markets, we're going to focus on the S&P 500 today for the equity market, look at a few of the stocks, walk you through how I do some of the scanning and go from there, and then I'll tell you more about our trading room and how we build the indicators and strategies around that. Now, we do this every uh, week on both a, a Friday and a Monday. We're going to actually focus to, on the, the Friday room is closed which has some spots available um, to kick off the week. I think that's actually better if you're more of a swing trader to focus on the start of the week and how the week's going to play out. Um, these sessions last an hour plus, and I'm finding at least two and a lot of times four or five trades in each hourly session. But I'm very picky. I don't like to just jam trades out there. It's all about quality first. And then, and then focus on getting your proper quantity of trades. And it's about interaction, too. So I'm big on making sure that we interact and get our students really up to speed. If you have any question along the way, you're able to take advantage of that 
uh, with me answering your questions directly in the trading room. And we call it the winner circle because I have, have a family history in the thoroughbred horse business. Uh, there's a beautiful racetrack here in Lexington, Kentucky called Keeneland Racetrack that uh, my grandfather, uh, my namesake, was one of the, uh, you know, uh, really visioneers that helped found that place back in the 30s. They thought he was crazy when it was the Depression, and he was saying, no, this is a good thing for the horse business in Kentucky, and uh, it turned out to be a very good thing. And it's a beautiful place. And so I've always had those roots in thoroughbred horses, but I told my dad when I was at Duke University, I switched majors from being an equine, equine veterinarian. I got in this trading contest that AT&T had sponsored at the time uh, when I was down there at Duke, and, and I just got hooked because I just I did really well in it. Uh, had a, I took the Warren Buffett approach initially, was not doing well buying and holding stocks. And so the final month of the four-month contest, I would just literally day trade them. This was in the late 80s before anybody was doing this. And it was paper money, of course. I was a college student uh, just with the, the uh, stars in the eyes of seeing how the markets were moving post-87 crash. And I managed to go from the bottom quartile to the top 1%. And I said, hey, Dad, I'm going to switch majors. I want to do something more conservative than breeding thoroughbred horses. I want to trade stocks and options. Right? And he looked at me like I was nuts. But the beauty of this, and I've been hooked on the business ever since and got started in 1990, been trading for 24 years now. And basically, when you look at it, you say, well, you know, hey, you know, the beauty of the liquid trading opportunities, the really active names, is that you've got the ability to get in and get out easily and quickly. You don't have that in a lot of other businesses, not just in the horses, you've got to be committed, but look at real estate, look at how many people got caught stuck in real estate, and the bottom line is you've got to have liquidity, you've got to be able to get in and get out. That's why we focus on the most active names. So in our winner's circle, um, Classes. We focus on every single week. We're going in on Monday, looking at the week ahead. How's the market set up? We're going to talk about some of these, like the S&P here tonight, uh, the gold market, the bond market, oil, and even the currencies like the dollar. We always look at our existing positions, and we've always given our students on every single trade a very clear target and a very clear exit point. And that's what I'm going to show you here in just a minute is a taste of that. Okay, so. What we're going to do also is we're going to show you how we scan for these opportunities, and then we're going to place different types of option trades. We're not just buying options or selling options. We're doing a mix. I believe that anybody who tells you you should only sell options or only buy options doesn't really know how to take full advantage of the possible setups that the market might be presenting because you've got to ask yourself, what's the volatility price into those options? What's the trend? How much time are we playing with and trading with? How 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 is this thing structured? And then what is the right type of option strategy? So that's about going through. And that's a big question my students always ask me is, how do you know which strategy to trade? And it's a process of teaching that over time. Uh, it doesn't just come by you just reading one book and thinking you can trade like people that have devoted their lives to this. It takes a lot of time. I know Steve, like our big trends list, has a lot of committed traders. And the fact that you're here tonight shows me how committed you are. Now, we talk about a lot of different pieces of the puzzle, okay? And I'm not expecting to go into all these here tonight. But we're going to focus on one of my favorites. And it's actually an indicator that I basically tweaked from another guy. You probably heard of him, Larry Williams excellent trader and a real trading innovator. Um, you know, and other ones like John Bollinger's Bollinger Bands, I mean, there's a lot of useful tools here, you know, and I know Steve is a master of candlesticks and reversals, and we're really talking about maybe a complementary type of uh, approach here that can look for the strong trends and saying, how can you get a better piece of that next Tesla, that next Apple, that next monster move, up and down, you know, because stocks don't go to the moon forever. Uh, all, all, all of these booms eventually turn to bust. Look at what happened with the tech bubble when I launched Big Trends back in '99, coming up on our 14th anniversary here next month. And the bottom line is that uh, you know since then you've seen the real estate bubble, of course. You've seen the gold bubble. There was a bubble in oil. There's certainly been a bubble in bonds. I would suggest that's maybe just starting to pop. Um, so the reality is is that you know these things all are things we want to take advantage of. But I'm going to talk about percent R. Let me go right into a chart here. I'm not going to go into old charts. I'm going to show you current charts here so we can really look at what's happening right here, right now. Okay. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of history here. We'll look at the. I look at multiple time frames. By the way, what type of trading crowd do we have here? Would you classify yourself as more of a day trader type? 
more of a swing trader type over three to five days, or more of a position trader type over one to four weeks up to a month, or just long term, put LT for long term. So, okay, bias towards a swing trade, which is good because that's exactly where I tend to focus in. I don't want to be too hyper trade oriented, although there will be some quick trading opportunities, but then also I don't want to have my capital exposure too long before looking to book some profits along the way. So, but there's this can work across a lot of different time frames. And we'll, for a daily chart, I'm usually looking about the next month out. And what you'll notice here on the percent R indicator, we're going to go back to the start of 2013 for a second, because what is the percent R indicator showing you here at the bottom of the chart? It's showing you that we're looking at where is the close on the S&P, the SPY, and I'm going to even give you a little taste of something I don't usually give away for free, but Steve's been very good to me, and I like to give back to um, you know good audiences like yourselves. I use a 30 bar percent R. Now, that's not something you're going to see, and you'll see it. This is TradeStation. You'll see it down here in the bottom left, and we'll get questions about it. So I'm giving you a taste of that. This is not my whole system, but the bottom line is giving you a starting point to go see what you're missing. Go validate it with your own eyes. I'm not trying to say, believe me blindly. I'm saying, let the, let the stocks that you've traded show you when you should have been on and when you should have been off. And I'm going to give you the first core rules here so you can see what you may have been missing. And some of you that have followed me for a while probably already know this, but for the new students out there, I'm going to do a little quick refresher here. But the bottom line is that when you saw what was happening at the end of last year, we're going through this same craziness again in Washington. Should anybody really be surprised? Of course not. But it's creating a lot of volatility. We had a big pop today. The market's up almost 2%. Uh, the Dow up 323 points, over 2%. NASDAQ also up over over uh, 2%. S&P right in that neighborhood. And it's creating a lot of day-to-day -day gyrations. Now, that's not necessarily a market I want to trade in a bigger picture context unless I'm scalping in and out, in and out. And it is a good market for that right now because you have enough of a daily range, even though volatility is not, quote, unquote, uh, high, you have enough day-to-day -day volatility right now. You can see it. Look at the big surge today. And you can see, just if we just zoomed in for the last month's action, the, the, you see, I use candles as well. Uh, Steve's taught me a lot. And the bottom line is that you see we had a very big turning point. Steve even talked about this uh, the other night to our big trends community about this kind of a turn. When you see that kind of a surge. Look at how we closed at the high of that range. It did close above a short-term moving average that's been holding for the last two and a half weeks. And the bottom line is that's probably a pretty significant candle. I think Steve would say it is. And the bottom line is that it shows you a turn from you know some of the bearishness we've seen in the past few weeks after you saw that big reversal and then flipping the other way. Now, percent R is looking for when it goes overbought and can it stay overbought. This last signal didn't do that. It tried to get going, had an initial pop in our favor, and we would take partial profits. We teach you about how to keep trailing your stops along the way. But this is where I want to go into, after I show you a little bit of the history of this uh, this year, looking back over the – and I want to not – Zoom in, zoom out too far because you can see it. But you saw what happened at the start of the year. You remember that gap up. It was not because it was a new year and everybody was celebrating a new year. It was because the fiscal cliff was addressed, at least enough so, at the 11th hour. Again, a pattern that we're all far too familiar with seeing. And so the bottom line is that you see a situation here in which when it goes into that top of the range, and that's what we're looking at here. It's a scale. I've flipped the normal scale, that's, and Williams had it as a negative scale, and I flipped it to a positive scale, because I just think it's more intuitive that if I tell you a stock closes at the high of the range, it's at the 100 percentile of that range. So that's as high as it can go. Well, you would think, when I tell you that something is overbought, how many of you would say, based on your training, that you've been trained to say overbought means buy or overbought means sell? Right? Just just a quick uh, type in a B or or a, a buy or an S or a sell. Yeah, everybody's been taught that overbought means sell. Okay? And there are times where it does mean sell if you're in a proven trading range. And I'm going to share with you the first guidelines of the rule. See, I'm big on giving you some meat here that you can leave today with and say, I got something I can go back and really examine, okay? And it does depend on the candles. If you're a candle follower, you do need to pay attention to that too. 
So what we would say here is that let's just zoom in on that particular signal for a second. That was the very start of the year, right? So you see what's happening here. We're breaking out, huge gap up. We go straight to overbought. We're literally at the, about the 99th percentile. We're, we're closing just a hair off of the highs. And so we're in the very overbought territory. You can see I've coded that going forward with the red color, which would normally be something that would be a caution for people. But look at what happens. My system, based on the big trends way to use percent R, is when it takes out that high. If that high had held from the start of the year, yes, that would have been the top of the range. In fact, we're saying that's the top of the range until proven otherwise. That was at 146.15 on the SPYs, the Spiders, one of the most liquid vehicles there are, traded about 200 million shares today. Very easy to get in and out of not just the SPY, but, of course, options on the SPY. You see what happened, though? Not the next day, but the day after, we closed above that and finished about 20 cents higher than that. So let's just face it. If you were saying this is the top of the trading range, and then the market blows through that to the upside, can you really acknowledge that that's still the top of the trading range? Or are you going to say, well, actually, now this, this move is the top of the trading range, and this move is the top of the trading range, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. That's not the trading range, folks. What is it? It's called a trend, and I call that a big trend, you know, that when we get into that overbought and stay overbought, you see very large moves potentially in relatively short periods of time. Now, this is a function of whichever type of time frame you like to trade. I would say that if you're a position trader, you'd focus on the daily. And you can see, yes, then it gets knocked out. Once it comes back out of the oversold mode, I don't immediately sell there, but if it then violates and follow through below there, I'd then say, okay, that's too weak. I'm going to hop out because I know that percent R will get me back on board the horse if it does another one of these setups. And you can see sometimes, like the latest one, we had a couple of really nice ones like the one in late April to mid-May, uh, of course the January, February one. It was a decent little one there in July to early August, at least for part of it. And then this last one was a slight loss. You see it caught that initial move. You can still make a little money on that trade if you book partial profits, and that's why I like to take profit target levels and take partials on the way out. I don't like to sell everything at once because if you've learned anything about trend trading, if you've ever traded a trend, you'll know that the money is in letting the trend be your friend, letting the trend run, at least on part of your position. You can always take something off to get your comfort level back to a place where you always want to be able to sleep well at night, okay? That's a first rule, right? If you're if you're trading too large and you're worrying about it overnight, it means you you need to cut your size back down. If you're still worried about it, it means you really need to probably go back uh, and, and examine your system and build some confidence in it and, and follow it even from the sidelines for a little bit before you start small and build. But the beauty of the markets is they're scalable. When you start building on top of that, you can really uh, – grow the amount you commit as you gain confidence and as you gain a comfort in being able to follow your system. So this one gave what we would call it a retest, and then it violated that. And it topped you out there uh, at that close or officially the next bar's open, because I try to be as real world as possible about if I'm sending a signal to my uh, recommendation subscribers at the end of the day or for the next morning's open, based on what just happened, well, then we're going to not be able to act on it until that next open, of course. Sometimes that works for you and sometimes it works against you, but over time, that tends to work its way out. Right now, what does percent R say about this market? It says trading range. We got down near the low end of the range. We actually went below the 20th percentile back here yesterday midday because we traded below that low. I should say um, from that was going back to uh, you know Tuesday and then it traded below there Wednesday and then of course today the big shot up on the gap and then the follow through all day. Now guess what? If you want to tie that into the intraday charts, you quick traders out there, look at how beautiful percent R has been over the last couple of signals just this week. It caught the downside as we were starting to heat up because you can see we're on a 15 minute chart now. This will usually last me one to no more than two days, usually. Okay, so this is if you're if you're more attuned to quick trading. But look at how significant this is. We got a sell signal as we broke down. We saw the first setup, and if it doesn't fall through and close below that low, we turn it off. So this one didn't fall through at first. Then it did the very next point, close under that low, uh, 167.41, right there at 167.34. That was on uh, Tuesday morning. Okay, so this is current charts. Again, 
not handpicking, and I'm looking at current action here so we can be real about what's going on and what's working and what's not. The beauty of this is that you'll see during the first leg down, how many times have you seen a trend developing, but you were afraid to pull the trigger? Anybody have a fear of pulling the trigger in your trades? No, no, we're never fearful in our trades, right? We never have to worry about that, right? Everybody does, okay? Let's face it. Everybody's gone through that or you're still going through that, okay? But here's what I tell my students is that basically if you've missed this first leg down, I don't recommend chasing until you get what we would call a retest. You see that the retest actually came in right here. This is what I teach my students is that this is a spot where you could bet that if it doesn't, go through that key high, then you can actually catch another leg down. In this case, you did catch another leg down into the next day, yesterday morning. Now, yes, it eventually then gave another retest, and that retest was eventually taken out above 165 and a quarter right there, 165.46. So that's about a two-point move, a dollar and uh, 89 cents to be exact. That's a, that's a pretty nice move in the SPYs for a day and a half. Now, today, you saw... Look what happened uh, yesterday late. We got to move into the overbought territory here. But guess what? It didn't follow through, so that didn't count, and it flipped back down. We would not have been taking any buy signal there. And, yes, we would miss that gap. But, of course, frankly, with all that's going on in Washington and these guys and gals are just basically such headline risk oriented, they're just throwing stuff against the wall, it seems like. Hopefully they'll get it together, but uh, let's not hold our breath. But we can still trade in the face of that, or even after that, because once the gap up happens, then we're overbought again. The question is, do we follow through? Yes, we do. And so that's a buy signal there on the start of the uh, 10 o'clock to 10.15, 15 minute bar, buy at 167.81. Now, I'm giving you a lot of stuff here tonight, and it's probably more than you know some of you can take in in one sitting, but I'd rather give you more than less. The, the thought here is if you're going to trade an option, which option should you trade? I promise you I'd talk about that. It's a mistake, in my view, to be too aggressive and trade the at the money option. Now, if you're not familiar with options, it means that, okay, just under 168, a lot of people would buy the 168 call trying to get a big pop and trying to really leverage that. And, yes, it does have more leverage. But there's too many cases where either it'll it'll flatten out or it'll – knock you out and then you really feel the pain versus if you're more conservative and buy say an in the money option let's just say for example at 168 I would have probably been looking at something like about a 165 or 166 call probably 166 if you're trading the weekly call so you could literally look in here and you say oh, look if I had traded that option right when I got that buy signal today um, and we had some good buys in there on the S&P. Okay, so you looked at just the weeklies that expire, in this case, tomorrow. You know you're going to be out by tomorrow, and the system will not last past tomorrow anyway. You can obviously book some partial profits. Let's just say, let's be even more conservative. Let's just say the 165 call. So you can see we're being pretty conservative there because that one is trading almost right in tune with the SPYs. Those were, they opened at $2.88 after that buy signal. You can see, this is the option chart, of course, but you can see what's going on here is from 288, and look, we even had a little test right there on the little pullback back around that level. You were slightly down at that point, but the structure of the chart was still bullish, and it closed, of course, at about 410. The bid was 395. So from 288 even to 395, you've made more than a buck on an option under three bucks. You're up 35-plus percent. And I would tend to recommend before the close, you'd take some of that off. You'd say, I'm, uh, as they say, bulls and bears get rich and hogs get what? Get slaughtered. You don't want to be piggish about how you handle a trade. You want to really manage that appropriately. Okay, so I've given you a lot to process there. But th that's the starting point of our market analysis, and it's the starting point of understanding one of the core indicators of many that I teach the percent are. Now, there's a lot of other things you'll see on these charts, like bands, not just Bollinger Bands, but also acceleration bands, a technique I developed for finding the speed of movement trends, the ones that are really starting to accelerate. And we're going to talk about Tesla as an example of that here in just a little bit. It's a, a real monster move. But once you know the technical indicators, I start there, by the way. I don't try to go look at hundreds of thousands of options and find the quote-unquote cheapest option. It sounds very, very sexy to do that, but I find that that's 
putting the cart before the horse. You want to actually get the underlying vehicle trend right and then know how to take advantage of it. So from this perspective, um, you know, we teach a lot of strategies, the breakouts, how to handle those, how to get back on a trend, like I was mentioning, uh, back on the horse after you've maybe been afraid to enter after a first leg up or down, and how do you say, hey, if the trend is still in place, uh, you want a piece of that action. It's kind of like the same thing at the horse race track, okay? Um, you know, again, I like the investment markets even better for positive expected return. It's a tougher game if you bet the horses. But the reality is is that if I have the winner, I want to be on the winner if the risk reward is right, even if he's been bet down from 10 to 1 down to 4 to 1. I still want to have the winner at 4 to 1. I don't want to try to, you know, go against what I believe is the horse that's going to win the race, right? So sometimes the odds don't say that it's the right bet and you just walk away. It's the same thing in the investment markets. So, uh Bottom line is that uh, you can see all types of different strategies for all types of different traders, day swing and position trades. We'll show you when the trend changes as well as when the exit hits. This is an area a lot of people have trouble with is exits. Entry is easy and exit is hard, right? Uh, it's it's real easy to uh, uh, get in uh, to any trade, but then the question is, now what? How many times have you asked yourself, now what, in a trade? You know, the bottom line is that you don't, we don't want you to be asking now what. We want you to have absolute clarity and know exactly what uh, we're looking for as our next move for a stock or uh, an option trade, okay? So with that in mind, so let's talk scans for a minute. You know, what I do here is I love going and finding new opportunities every day. I mean, there's opportunities out there. There's always a bull move and a bear move somewhere. You know, I view it as my job is just basically to dig and dig and dig until I can find those opportunities for my subscribers, for my workshop students, uh, for fellow traders. You know, and so, and I've been doing like uh, now 20, I'm on, I'm on my 24th year. So basically, you know, helping other traders. And so the reality is, is that, you know, we want to look at a systematic approach. A lot of people yawn when they hear the word system because they think that's boring. You know, that's just uh, like, being a robot and being mechanical, but the reality is that you need to make sure you're being more systematic in your trading here. I'm going to show you a chart of Tesla here, just as an example here in a minute. And I'm going to look at Apple, too, because I know a lot of you follow Apple. So we're going to talk about how we find these new opportunities, how we find these spots to initiate a trade, and how we define the, the stop loss point so that you can make sure that you're managing that appropriately. Uh, you don't want to get yourself into a mode where you're basically getting, a, you know, in a too much of a willy-nilly perspective. So every Monday, we do these on Monday mornings, um, and we also, when you become a, a member of the uh, Big Trends uh, trading room on Mondays, is that basically you'll see that we um, give you access, even if you're going Monday to the last 52 weeks of classes. So it's not just each Monday and thinking, oh, well, am I going to be able to catch that on a given Monday? We archive them right away as quickly as we can. It usually takes us, if I've talked for an hour, it usually takes us a couple of hours for the archive to get posted because it, it's, it's a loading process. And there's a lot of data in there. But the bottom line is that if you're interested in not just basic options, like buying a call or a put, but also learning how to cash flow the markets with things like credit spreads, iron condors you may have heard of, butterflies, all kinds of different strategies, talking about, okay, what we would do with that particular trade. I can talk about it to a group and say, hey, you know, Joe, you asked about, uh, you know, XYZ stock, and let's talk XYZ because everybody's learning about how I would view that particular stock and, and trade or potentially trade a strategy around it. We also focus on the defining the time frames, defining exactly what you want to do as far as which indicators driving the trade because as you get more indicators, you've got to be careful about basically liking one indicator, then you basically get a, a knock on that indicator, but then you like a different indicator. That's dangerous. We've had a lot of success in finding not just straight calls and puts, stocks like Dendrion, uh, I mentioned Tesla, we've had that one in there, we've had 
uh, the old research in motion, now BlackBerry, now getting uh, taken private. China, you know, the FXI ETF. You can see, you know, just examples of trades that we've done. And same thing when we look at credit spreads. This is how you can cash flow the markets. And so bottom line is cash flowing the markets is, uh, is something that everybody's looking for. You know, how do we how do we take trades that we can basically say, okay, the trend bias is up. Maybe you don't want to buy a call if the options are expensive. Maybe you want to sell a put and buy another put. That's known as a credit spread. If we do it, if you set it up properly, even if the stock doesn't move or just chops around, you can get paid with a greater regularity when you do credit spreads and these other income strategies. And of course, you see some of the big volatile names because a lot of times those names like Amazon, Apple, Google, um, as well as the gold market, GLD, and others, you know, move a lot, and so they have a lot more volatility priced in there. So these are just just examples of some of our success stories uh, and how our students have done. And we're going to talk about how you can get your trades reviewed every Monday, but uh, but first, let me actually go in here, talk for example about Apple. Apple is basically stuck in that trading range. You can see it barely gave a sell signal here uh, at, in. Uh, early September, we didn't take that one because we told our students, look, Apple is full of event risk because of their launch of the new phones. They, of course, came out and said they sold a bunch more of them. It gapped up. But notice, stock has been stuck at edging up here towards the upper overbought part of the range. But this is the kind of thing where you say, look, the last buy signal came on Apple back on July 24th. Well, the setup actually was on the 24th. It didn't fall through until the 29th uh, at 447 and gave the buy on a little gap up, four cents under $450. There again, you get the breakout, and then look, there's the retests coming right in here. These retests are ideal uh, reentry points in my work, and you see another spike up, another retest, another pop. We actually traded around that uh, very nicely for our subscribers, and then bottom line is you see what happens. Then they have their big uh, shareholder event uh, announcing the new iPhone 5S and 5C. And we were all telling people, get out in front of that. The options were super expensive. And that's just the past little window on the upside on Apple. You can see, for the most part, over the last year, it's been ever since the peak last September, it's been sell, sell, sell almost all the way. We only had one buy signal from September of last year through uh, the new trend that kicked in uh, in late July, early August. So in about a year, it had in the neighborhood of about six key cells, maybe seven, and uh, only had one buy that was, of course, not a good one there. So bottom line is that we want to be positioned for where the bigger move is happening on the right side of the trend. Now, what I want to share with you here, before I, I'll go into a few other charts and uh, Q&As here, but I do want to share with you other charts and other examples of what you're going to get. And one of the things we've done on this page that, uh, in case you have to run early, I don't want you to miss this because this is literally an incredible value. I mean, it's 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 amazing to me that that we're this willing to get you started with so much value that we've set up for on this BigTrends.com slash TW page. So I'm going to actually pop that up just to show you what it looks like. It's actually uh, it tells you the story of how when we first started our trading workshops. People were raving about it in just the first five months as to how much they were um, basically hitting it out of the park. And, I, again, I'm, I've got a lot more to share with you, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this process, but I want you to see where you need to go when you get to the end of this. Once you review all that, it gives you the whole story on that. You get several places as you read about the trading workshops, but guess what? I'm, I'm going to throw in an extra bonus I'm going to tell you about, which is my Options Profit Blueprint course. If you're newer to options or you just just need a little refresher on how I teach about the core option strategies. Every trader's got to know. If you're going to do any options at all, I'm throwing in an extra bonus here tonight. Now, this is something where, for the Monday Trading Workshops, when you hit any of those Add to Cart um, uh, links, it, you'll see your shopping cart pop up. And the thing you have to do here is you do have to click on this Instant Promotional Package Upgrade. You have to click the uh, Options Profit Blueprint DVD course. It's four DVDs. We're, we're giving you four DVDs, free shipping in the U.S., and a month of the trading workshops for just 99 bucks. Is that a typo? No, it's not. I know that you're going to be hooked once you see what you've been missing, not just with the Big Trends approach and learning new 
very clear-cut indicators like our approach to percent R, but a lot more, but also um, getting the education that goes with it. So here for 99 bucks, uh, you're getting that course. That course alone uh, at one point sold for, even when we gave a special on it, it was $399. Um, and basically it was, and, and it was popular at that price. I'm doing this as a thank you. Steve's helped, uh, uh our folks and helped me so much over the years that we've done all kinds of events together. It's my way of saying, hey, I know it'll be something that'll basically fly off the shelves. Now there's only, I believe there's only about 40 of those left that we can actually offer for this before they're gone. And so from this perspective, please make sure you don't miss out on it. Now, bottom line though is I want to tell you about that course and then I'm going to come in, I'm going to look at a few more trades, okay? So basically let's just take a quick peek here at the, um, Trader uh, blueprint. You know the options profit blueprint uh, is all about you know taking advantage of volatility, high volatility and low volatility. If you looked at the volatility index right now, it's very low historically, and so you need to know what volatility is doing in order to take advantage of that. You know a good basic indicator. You've heard of the VIX. There's actually an ETF that trades against the VIX called the VXX, and you'll see here getting back into some charts that look at what happened to VXX a few days ago. There was an interesting little news item that hit a couple days ago that on the 8th, going back to Tuesday, the CBOE said that they had a record number of options traded in their VIX options, their VIX options. That meant that people were basically making a lot of bets about volatility surging and look at what it's doing. It's going the other way. See, when you hear those records being being had and trumpeted in the media, a lot of times that's kind of a bell ringer that, hey, people are getting fearful out there, and you can see it got overbought, and then it flipped right back down the market. Of course, has snapped back nicely over the last day and a half, very nicely. You can also see that VIX has been in a long-term, VXX especially, been in a long-term downtrend. That means fear has been eroding as the markets have gone up. And eventually that's going to change, but for now it's still in that trading range, and that was a sign that basically fear was too high and we needed a bounce, and we're getting that bounce now. So with that in mind, there's I have four favorite strategies to take advantage of high versus low volatility environments. Now, I'm a big believer in keeping it simple. I like to go and remind ourselves, what are we talking about when we talk about volatility? Well, it's interesting because you see words in here that are kind of uh, eye-opening here. Words like violence, uh, explosive. You know, you know that's what how options can move when the markets start to get more and more volatile. Um, and so the bottom line is that uh, you know we know that you know it's it's there's a change to that. I think it's interesting that the word flighty came in here because that volatility, the markets almost move in a manic depressive state. Have you ever noticed that? It seems like a couple of days ago, everybody says the world's coming to an end, and then boom, we get a monster rally, and now everybody wants to buy back in. That manic depressive state leads to a lot of sharp fluctuations. That's the opportunity, not just if you trade equities, but even more so if you're trading a leveraged instrument intelligently like options. So, you know, with that in mind, you know, if we were looking at high volatility markets, you'd want to be selling something. You know, credit spreads, uh, selling a put, uh, you know, short straddles or short strangles, uh, iron condors, those type of things might have some opportunity when vols are high. The implied volatility is high. Right now, implied volatility is relatively low. So it's much more geared to not just buying options, but also things like debit spreads or other strategies where maybe you're a net buyer, but you sell something against it to manage your, your risk but you still get some opportunity to benefit from a potential uh, surge in volatility should uh, the markets get a little more uh, uh, uncertain going forward with Washington and other uh, continuing to gyrate. Uh, now, bottom line is that we want to always focus you on knowing the options essentials. Now, we're going to talk about a few of these. I believe you should consider knowing a little bit more about when should you sell an option against your stock, whether you're an investor or a trader. And that's known as a cover call. You own a stock, you sell an option against it, usually a little bit above the strike price, uh, the, the stock price, so the stock, say, at 50 bucks, 
you might sell a 55 call going out a couple months. Stocks at 100, you might sell a 105 or a 110 call. You try to give yourself, um, you know, that type of an opportunity here. We're going to get into scans here too, Phil, so thanks for the reminder. We'll show you what's showing up as a buy before we're done. Just stay with me. And, of course, if you were really committed to a stock, say you had a very low cost basis, you can still protect your profits and not have a tax event by considering protective puts. Now, you should always consult with your tax advisor because the IRS has gotten a little bit, uh, you know, more stringent about what type of option you need to sell or buy to protect yourself that they, you can't just take all the risk out of the trade, according to them, or else that's considered as being already sold at that point. And that, that was an eye-opener for me when I launched Big Trends. I did it on the back of some big gains that I had in technology and other big sectors like brokers uh, in the late 90s. And I had big gains in a little old stock named CMGI that was a big Internet darling at the time. I got rid of it in the early 2000, but I was one that had a, almost a triple in it and wanted to sell a call against it. The stock had gone from about 50 to almost 150. And I thought, well, I could sell a deep in the money call back at 100. It's 50 points in the money. That gives me a ton of room for the stock to even plunge and still, you know, be okay that I've locked in this price. But then guess what? I did the tax research on it and they said, no, you've got to, you've got to sell an option that's closer to the money. There's some very clear guidelines about that that I teach traders about. So these are important little details if you're wanting to stretch out your um, profits and not get taxed on them so quickly. For option traders, we would say the stock substitute strategy is a very powerful one. All that means is that if you're bullish, instead of buying stock, you buy the right kind of option that's a bit in the money usually, and you're going to see a better um, bang for your buck than buying the stock, and it's going to still control your time risk. If you're bearish, you consider buying a put as a substitute for playing a short uh, view on a stock. Now, with the Options Profit Blueprint, this is the first of the four DVDs is just the foundation. Just all the options basics and learning how to read very simple stuff like profit and loss graphs. You know, and if you're an option trader already, you'll see my take on the Greeks, elements like volatility, theta, the time decay, and a whole lot more. Um, so that's the starting point. You've got to start with your foundation. But then we go in the second Blueprint DVD into cover call strategy. And you're getting all this. Bear with me because you're getting all this for $99. It's insane value. And, again, the first 40 or so who lock it down, that's going to be – it'll be available until it's sold out. So don't wait on it. Um, now, the, and, and what you'll see here – and all of this is included at the bigtrends.com slash TW link. This was a prior one we did where we sold it just by itself, you're getting the workshops and the course for $99, not just one or the other. But bottom line is that you can see here that when you have a cover call strategy here, and thanks Chris Sarah, my associate, and he's my lead trade consultant in to help uh, point you in the right direction there on the chat box. Now, bottom line is that, uh, you know, what we're looking at here is that we want to keep it simple. So we're, I'm a big believer in the... Uh, KISS principle of keeping it simple, right? But then also we want to be relatively, you know, risk managed to generate a little more income in markets where you know how hard it is to generate income on cash in this market. They, Thanks to our friends at the Fed, ha, uh, they have made cash trash, right? They have tried to force every extra dollar into the stock market. Well, you don't have to do that without at least protecting yourself, learning about cover calls and how to generate a check. Not just, it used to be once a month I would talk about this, and now with weekly options, you can do this same income strategy every week that I talk about in the second blueprint DVD. Now, the third one, we go into the protective put strategy. How many times have you thought, well, you know, I, I, I didn't need that insurance because, you know, gee, nothing bad happened to my car or my house. Well, guess what? That's a good thing, right? You know, you don't want your ass that insurance was just protecting you in the worst case scenario. And obviously, when options are relatively cheap, like they are now, insurance starts to make a lot more sense because you're able to buy it very reasonably to guard against some big surprise. And, you know, God forbid, whatever that big negative surprise could be, but it's not a bad idea to learn about how to protect your equities and your ETFs and your core positions using uh, 
insurance protection with the protective put. So, you know, you learn that, and then we go into now you're looking to leverage your capital a little bit more by instead of buying the stock and tying up a bunch of capital by the stock substitute strategy and really get a much better bang for your buck. You can see just a sample of some of these uh, things you'd see on your computer, you can uh, you know, or, or on your TV, however you want to watch them. You can see that basically you'd get an opportunity here where you know you see what the the profit and loss graph says and learn how to read that, and then we'll show you numerous option strategies for all different types of market conditions. Now, like I said, this was previously sold for uh, $3.99, and we were including the workshops with it. That's 99 bucks. Again, when we first launched it, it was 9.97. We did a 3.99 special. It was the last time that I've offered this in a webinar format, and that's why I'm saying it's not 3.99. It is 99 bucks for all of that, and in same value. Okay, so just remember to go to that page. It's the bigtrends.com slash TW. And, you know, what I want to do is I want to get into some charts. But you're going to see the great story about how the trading workshop started. All the things you get literally over the course, if, even if you're just buying for the first month, is, is what I would recommend because that's a great value getting the options profit blue to get access to the last 52 weeks of workshops that I've done. So you can soak it in, power up, literally start to learn this stuff starting right away as soon as you get signed up and have time, not just overnight, but also into the weekend to get ready to get started on the Monday uh, next workshop I'm doing uh, here. And so the bottom line is you also get the ability to email in questions. So basically, and you also, of course, during the during the events, you get to send them in just like you would here in these, in these uh, webinar rooms and I answer all questions for everybody's benefit. So, and it's a great community of traders that are sharing a lot of ideas there. So, And you can also watch this stuff on a mobile phone, uh, your smartphone, your iPad, those type of, of vehicles. And, you know, the 12 months is great, but I would really suggest just lock in the $99. And you'll learn all these strategies, too, not just the basic ones, but also a whole lot more as you go down into all the other pieces. Now, what I want to do is show you a couple of other charts. Someone asked about Tesla, and Tesla's a great example of how an overbought stock can stay overbought a lot longer than you would possibly expect. TSLA, um, you know, bottom line is that, and by the way, Chris did mention that we're not just sending you the uh, hard good options profit blueprint for the first 40, but we're also giving everybody here the digital access as well. So the bottom line is make sure that uh, you lock it in quickly so you get both, but uh, the digital access alone would get you the instant uh, access to start to learn this stuff right away. But a good example of Tesla, you see a couple times where it tried to break out back there in March and early April, and you see what happens to percent R? It stalls when it first goes over bot up here, and it doesn't follow through. And so we don't actually have a signal there, right? It does the same thing again in early April, and then boom, it starts to move. That high is 46.14. Two days later, it's 46.97, and the setup is right. It's confirmed. And so you're getting a buy there at really 47 bucks, but it gaps a little bit. The next day, it's up to almost 48 bucks. Okay, so the buy is at 48 bucks. Well. The bottom line is, you see, just that first move alone, the stock went up more than double from mid-April to the end of May. And you can see, though, that then did kind of slam down a little harder than you would have liked. It stopped it out at 92.75. Now, obviously, if you're an options trader, we'd have been saying scale out, scale out, scale out. I don't expect you to get all of the move, but I want you to be around for at least part of it so you can actually benefit from this kind of launch effect that a lot of these have. Now, that was the best part of that trend because you can also see those purple lines are my uh, acceleration bands. The light blue lines are longer-term Bollinger bands. That was a blast out of all of those. So that's the parabolic effect. You see how it's going literally vertical through that first wave up. Now, that was not the end of the move by any means. The next move on Tesla hit and confirmed as it just broke out, just followed through. And so it was buying there at 104.65, and it immediately was testing just under $100. So you were slightly down from the buy signal, 
And this word patience is important, that you say, okay, if I'm trading the daily chart, I need to basically have the patience to wait for the daily closes. If that's too much for you, you need to get down to the intraday charts. There's a key test. There's another key test. It keeps bouncing off there until this last test ends, and it went from 105 essentially to 136. That was a nice little move, and this latest move just ended about a week ago after a nice run from 156 to a peak at about 194. And this is, again, one where you could look at, well, what's going on on the intraday charts? Well, you see the last really great signal was the buy on the hourly because, of course, we had the buy on the daily. So I don't want to be fighting the longer-term trends, which are clearly up for Tesla. You may say, well, this is a massive bubble and it's got a crack. You know, they had a picture of their you know, one of their uh, cars in the northwest at a had a car fire because it allegedly struck something and the battery pack blew up or, you know, in, in, I don't know exactly how to say it, so don't hold me to that. But the bottom line is they're showing pictures on CNBC of a, of a Tesla car on fire. Not good for the stock, right? That was happening through this window right in here about a week ago. But the bottom line is that, you know, the window of opportunity if you're a swing trader came back in mid-September, September 19th, 177, ran it up there to about 195, and then when it rolled over right there and it stopped out, you're done with that trade at uh, 185, okay, on the rest of the position. So from this perspective, you know, we really look at this is, you know, clearly, you know, what's the structure of this chart? Well, right now it's very trading range-ish. And you might say, well, that means I can sell some options, right, because a flat stock, the time should work in my favor. I don't tend to recommend that, folks, because that's going to basically still put you at the vagaries of when the market does start to trend or the stock does start to trend up or down. I would love, if you, even if you like to sell options, you could basically, instead of buying calls, which would give you the best bang for the buck through this window of time, you could also sell a put credit spread and benefit from that uh, getting further and further away from the strike price you would have sold back down in here probably. So from that perspective, just saying, hey, look, these are opportunities uh, across a lot of different stocks. And the purple lines are my acceleration bands there, Raj. So this is something where acceleration bands show you the really big surge. It's usually the first wave of a move. And you can do this on any time frame. It's eye-opening to me when you look across. I've got so many time frames that I look at. What if we looked at the monthly chart? You know, just to really take a super big picture view right here. We'll just look at percent R. I look at a lot of different things. But you can see percent R went on a buy signal on the long-term S&P monthly chart when we broke over 126, uh, about 128.68. That was on the start of February uh, 2011 at 129.46. And look, we had a key pullback that happened right in here in that August of 2011 summer panic. The market plunged down to 110, and that was a key short-term low, and then we've rocketed off of there ever since. If you've missed this rally from your longer-term perspective, what would you do? You would wait until you got a, a more significant pullback, if you're truly thinking long-term for your long-term money, until you at least got one of these retest pullbacks on the monthly chart. You see what I'm talking about? This works across pretty much all the time frames. Um, you know, you could look at Apple in that same context, right? I mean, look at Apple. Apple had just monster moves when it was blowing out through there. The stock went from a buy signal to about 188 uh, and a half actually opened up there about 202 and then ran of course all the way up to 700 and then when it came down last fall that was a retest at 587 and it violated it there at 585 so it got you out of Apple right there the start of the month of December last year at $593 yes Apple has bounced but guess what it's in this no man's land where a lot can happen this no man's land of this trading range is chop that I want to avoid. Why would you want to tie up your capital and be stuck in a dead, choppy situation when you could have been in a faster mover, one that's got a clear bias to the upside or a clear bias and in, in even in a downside opportunity? You know, you can leverage your capital with those more dramatic trends. The yellow line there is just a trailing uh, exponential moving average that we use just to help us to you know, keep up with the best part of the trends and also serve as kind of a heads up that this might be a turn in the short term, or in this case in the multi-month term for Apple, starting to improve a little bit, but still nowhere near a fast trend right now. So 
a lot of people bought into Apple probably too late, and bottom line is now you're going to see potentially a situation where it might consolidate for possibly longer than most people would like. In that context, long term, did real well with Microsoft in the late 90s. You can see Microsoft, Mr. Softy, blasted to the upside. We just didn't have enough data for the signal to kick in, but it kicked in back in the mid-90s on that last signal. Had one key test in the 98 long-term capital management, and then it's blasted again. But what was really fascinating to me about this one is when the markets were still trending up in the first quarter of 2000, Microsoft pulled back, and then it violated at about $40.00. And that was right before they announced that the Department of Justice was investigating them for antitrust practices for too much of a monopoly on the software business, right, the operating system business. So the bottom line is that look at what Microsoft's done since. Yeah, it's had a couple of little percent R moves, but basically stuck in the mud. It actually is on a short term or a, in, a monthly chart buy signal now, and they did just have their um, – their lead guy, Steve Ballmer, just announced he's going to step down. I think he made, somebody said that the day he announced he's going to step down, the stock gapped up almost 9%, and he made a billion dollars by announcing he was going to step down. That's not a bad day's work, right? Uh, but uh, anyway, fascinating what how the markets behave and react. But, you know, Raj says, what's the best leading indicator I can use and suggest? I mean, again, you've got to be careful about getting too leading. You know, I've used a lot of leading indicators like sentiment measures, like the put-call ratio and things like that. But let's face it, sometimes that can be very tricky trying to catch a falling knife when you're starting to see a surge in put options. Does it mean they're going to stop surging? You know, do you want to catch that falling knife or do you want to wait till you see some confirmation? I know Steve even preaches the same thing, that you really want to see these type of, 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 uh, you know, kind of, follow through points and not just try to pick a spot out of thin air. A lot of people get sucked into that desire that our ego has to call tops and call bottoms. I was at a conference once where I remember John Bollinger said that one of his mentors told him that you're only allowed allowed to call the exact top and the exact bottom once in your life. And I thought that's a great little anecdote because it means we should not be playing that game. Even if you got lucky once doing it, Bottom line is admit when you're lucky versus when you're good. I'm all about finding opportunities for you to really zero in on when there's an edge, when there's an opportunity. In fact, probably some of my best trades, like we're looking long-term for a second here, Valero back in 2004 and five. I was on Fox News a couple times. I'd written a book that called Big Trends in Trading that was uh, well-received. And bottom line is that, you know, we saw this thing breaking out, and I was saying, look, this is a great opportunity to buy into Valero. And on Fox News, they usually have four panelists, at least when I was on there, me and three others, along with the anchor, and love them there, Fox News, uh, as well as CNBC. And bottom line is, look, all three of those other panelists said, absolutely not. Don't touch it. It's already too overbought. You know, because they're looking back. Remember, it's easy to look back at the left side of the chart. It's a little harder to really understand where the right side of the chart tells you it's going. And what they're seeing, this is pretty interesting, what they're seeing is that, holy cow, this stock was back down here at $4.50, and Headley's telling people to buy it up here when it's uh, just now giving this little pullback here at $16. That's way overextended, right? But the reality is that that chart structure is very, very bullish, as long as it holds, as long as that low on that key test about just under $16 holds. From $16, look at what the stock did. It went up to 70 Those people that were telling people not to listen to me ended up not being so smart. But the reality was I went back on again in 2005, and I said the same thing. I said, I still think Valero's a buy here into that pullback. Now, I can't go into Fox News and say, the percent R is giving a bullish retest signal. They would quickly usher me to the door. You know, so we were talking about fundamentals. The refiners uh, the refiners weren't being built because they cost $5 billion plus dollars and five years to get online. And so Valero had practically their own little monopoly on the space comparatively. Not a perfect one, but they certainly were at the lead of that oil boom in 0405. You see that all trends eventually end. That retest did violate there, and now we're back into kind of that no man's land. Even though the stock made one more run to a new high, you can see that was a slight losing trade, and it wasn't as good because it wasn't moving outside the acceleration bands. 
You'll learn about acceleration bands and a whole lot more in the trading workshops. And so, like I said, the, the place to go for all that, we had it up here, uh, is when you go to that, uh, that page we set up for you, which is bigtrends.com slash TW, okay? So that's the trading room uh, page. And when, what we've set up for you, and it's only going to be there while these supplies last, is when you go over to that uh, website page, bigtrends.com slash TW, it'll just redirect you to this um, whole story about how they started and how many great comments we've had about them. And you'll get multiple points uh, as you go through to click on the Add to Cart button for just the $99, or you can click that blue text. And if you've already clicked need to take that out. But the thing you want to do before you then hit the checkout button and you actually fills out the various fields uh, that you'll need to fill out is just click to receive the Options Profit Blueprint DVD course as part of this promotional package. Now, you know, I would imagine not many people are going to say not right now. This is a huge value, four DVDs, literally four plus hours of content, and we're giving the digital access. If you're in the U.S., it's no additional shipping charge. If you're outside the U.S., I do have to add a little bit for shipping just to cover my costs. Uh, but it's nominal, right? So basically, you can see that cart adjusts to whether you're in the U.S. or out of the U.S. Put in what's in bold there, your basic information there, which credit card you want to use. we we'll are take all the big ones. If you've ever worked with one of our trading consultants or if it's just something that you heard me on for the first time tonight, uh, you give, give credit where credit's due. Anybody that's assisted you along the way, click on the check box. That's just our terms and conditions, which are clearly spelled out here. Uh, 99 bucks, obviously, there's a very, talking about a low risk entry point. I mean, this is literally taking more than two decades of my knowledge, condensing it down into the core things that you need to know to really get a jump start. And then looking over my shoulder, with the trading workshops each and every week. Now, that's set up on the $99 as an auto-renew, so if you don't want to auto-renew, um, just let us know in the first 30 days, and we will not continue your subscription. If you don't tell us anything, well, for convenience, I, I don't want my staff having to punch in orders or you punch in orders every month, all month, for 12 months, 12 different times. So basically, it's just set up for convenience, but we can easily turn that off if you call us and tell us, hey, don't charge me again. Or you may want to upgrade uh, down the road and get the 12-month special where you can save a few hundred bucks on the uh, versus what you'd pay over the course of 12 $99 payment, so you save about 300 bucks on the full year special. Um, you know, bottom line is that, uh, you know, there's winning trades and there's losing trades. You know, Trader S, I'm sorry if you came in in a rough spot, you know, the bottom line is, and I, I always try to teach people about how to manage their risk. You know, if you, if you look at low risk manageable entry points, you can definitely see uh, how to take advantage of that. And a good idea here, I should actually share with you here for a second, I'm going to just pop up a page here. I've got to log in. We use the Trade Monster platform for our model portfolio. And so within the model portfolio, for example, um, you know, you'll be able to see, you know, what trades we're doing, what's, uh, what's been working, what's not working, you know, basically how to manage those trades. Let me just make sure I've got the login. So I'll typed in here. I can't give all that away. But bottom line is that... Uh, pop it up here in just a second, that you look at it and you say, okay, you know, when we're looking at, say, you know, the uh, particular room they're talking about here. So, so for example, this is actually the Friday class. So, this one, this the Friday class is closed, but the Monday class still has some spots. But the bottom line is that uh, you see that, you know, there's winning trades and there's losing trades, okay? You can see that actually we were making a whole lot more money before today's gap up on the S&P because I had uh, this uh, uh, call vertical, right? I basically sold calls above the market betting that the S&P could range trade but probably wouldn't go that much higher. And you know what happened. We traded right up to 120, 169. So that trade basically went against us today but while other trades went for us. So that's the nature of the game. You know, some trades are going to work, some trades aren't. Overall, it's good to the tune of $2,456. Now, you know, the Monday uh, service, you, you'll see winning and losing trades, and I just popped in one of the two so I could show you that. And it's really clear-cut. So we literally go through and we look at the options montage. 
or any given thing. So if we're looking at the SPYs, we're going to pop in there and say, okay, so which one would we want to trade on SPY if we're looking at it right now? I did promise you a quick look at the scans. And basically, that's I knew I was forgetting something. Let me actually go look at the scans here real quick. So scanning is basically something where once you learn the indicators, there's a few different platforms where you can get our Big Trends Toolkit um, as an extra little app. On. It's not that expensive, but it's basically one of those where you say, look, if you're an hourly trader, you know, if I go and I say, okay, I want to know, just for a second, let's just look at, uh, let's just look for a second at just percent R. Let's say, look, percent R, going back here to um, the current bar, okay, so current action on percent R. The strongest stocks coming into the day here, into the close, were Johnson & Johnson, Pepsi, and we also got a green light buy signal on IBM. Okay, that's interesting because those stocks have been kind of dead in the water for a little bit. A lot of the consumer growth names, a lot of the Dow stocks have lagged. Um, you can also see as you scroll down, there's a few other greens, including BHP Billiton, which has been a laggard, um, Gilead, which has been one we'd like to trade, G-I-L-D, definitely a name you should know. Um, even Cisco Systems, another Dow stock. So the Dow clearly helped drive the markets today. DIA, you can see, was a little bit ahead of SPY on its overall gain for the day. Now, um, when we go and look at those, what we'll do is say, okay, that's great. So Johnson Johnson, Pepsi, IBM. What I would do is I would then type each of those in, and I would I like to look at multiple time frames. So you can see why we're getting that buy signal on Johnson Johnson on the hourly chart. The problem is the daily chart is coming in for what we would call a bearish retest. It's, this pop-up shows some resistance at today's high, just under $88 uh, at, at this uh, you know, closing base level. So now Sam says, you don't, do you have access just on Mondays? I mean, the Monday classes and all the archive Monday classes will be in there for you. Uh, we started the Monday sessions last November. So you have almost 52 weeks of access there, and, and basically you'll be able to go back and look at literally dozens of hours of content in addition to the new ones that I do starting with the next one this Monday morning. Um, and so the bottom line here is that, and they're Mondays, by the way, at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. I like to give the markets a little bit of room to, um, to actually start to do their thing over that first hour or so. And as they settle in, then I basically go look for these new opportunities. So J&J, &J, not really one of my favorites there because the daily is not where it needs to be. And you'll see this with probably quite a few of these charts because they've been laggards. That's a, a, a sell on the daily and now a retest. Actually, it's probably too steep of a retest. So that's going to be a stop out on Pepsi on a daily bear. It's now hourly bull. And we're going back in a 15-minute bull as well. So Pepsi might have some legs tomorrow morning. It'd definitely be one I'd be looking at for a possible quick trade. And then IBM. IBM, actually, I take it, that looks a lot like John John, that basically it's giving us this kind of a retest bearishly on the daily, even though it looks super strong on the intraday charts. So we don't want to step in front of that. So, and I appreciate the kind words, Robert. Uh, a lot of people have used my education in supplement with what you're already doing. I'm not asking you to replace what you're already doing. Hopefully you see by my goodwill that I want you to take an example of, look at the percent R, for example. Go onto your platform, change the setting from whatever it defaults to, probably 10 or 14, change it to 30, and see how you can use it, the big trends way, to really find some meaningful trends. Look at the, the ones that you missed. Look at the ones that you wish you'd been a part of, and you'll go back and you'll say, wow, I could have actually really participated in that. You know, a, an example of that is like a stock like Best Buy. Best Buy was considered dead meat. Um, going back, you know, you see how strong it's been over the last uh, nine months. But BBY was a great example of a stock that was considered dead in the water like a circuit city. Look at it when you go back on the chart and you say, man, this thing before this recent Take off. This thing was in a perpetual downtrend. Everybody's saying bricks and mortar retailers are dead, right? Especially, especially one uh, like BBY. Uh, not so fast. Look at the percent R buy signal that kicked in here at fourteen dollars. 
stayed with it. If you miss that first move up, you got another retest. You got a second retest. How many retests did you get? You got a third retest, okay, and then the fourth one it had a violation, okay? So it knocked you out of the first move from 14 to 23. It did about double during that window. You know, BBY is still leading, although we need to see if it can follow through now above today's high, because you can see the last uh, signal that it had, it ran from uh, a, a buy signal there at 34, it ran up to about 39. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a big move, more than 10% in less than a month. If you annualize that out, you're talking about 100% plus annualized type of returns. Now, obviously, no past trade can guarantee future performance, but I would be saying on BBY, I got to see on a daily chart a close through that high 39.30. Another one left for dead was Facebook, right? Actually, it just gave the exit off of a monster buy signal it had back here in July. But again, if we go back in time on Facebook and you you remember that IPO, what a bust it was, how the NASDAQ had their problems with it, and the thing IPO'd up there, uh, it's open at $42. And literally in the next few months, the stock was cut in more than half. Okay? Looks like pretty much dead meat, right? But then you see it starts to pick up earlier this year. We get a couple of decent little buy signals, and then one fake out bad signal there. And so not, not all signals are perfect, but then look at this monster that came in here as it started to pick up. And you see it got a good little short signal. We actually made some money on one of our recommendation signals on that short signal. And then look at the buy. The buy here at 25.58, then the big monster surge that came in from the last earnings period. And look at the continuation move. One retest along the way at $42 on the way up to over $50. You don't have to be around for the whole move to, to benefit from it. But we just had a violation ever so slightly, so it was selling at this morning's open. So from 25 and a half, it cashed it in at 47.87. So, okay, one more, Baidu, Joseph. I'll throw one in there for you. We're, we're way over, and I don't want to keep Steve and his team here longer than the hour, I promised. Uh, they have to uh, have a life, too. They're just as committed as I am to really teaching you about trading and thankfully, we love what we do uh, so we can be away from our significant others to actually share with you eye-opening concepts here. So bottom line is Baidu. You see Baidu gave that monster rally back here in July. We got a piece of that. We got out too early. We were afraid of the earnings. We sold ours in front of the earnings. Kicked myself later. But, hey, we still made a little bit and moved on, right? Not a problem. Um Retest opportunity, and then this retest actually slightly violates. So Baidu starts to break out again here, and then since this last little buy here, it went from 142.21, and you see there's a retest. You could have gotten on at 147 on the way to 160, and then this last little pullback, just a little too steep here earlier in the week, and so now hopping out on the gap up. So you're seeing that pattern a little bit where some of the buy signals are just getting cashed in because of the volatility the markets have had over the last few sessions. All right. Well, I'm out of time. As I mentioned, I wanted to answer some questions there for you. But make sure you go to that page. Chris put it up, but I'm going to ask him to put it up one more time, the bigtrends.com slash TW page. When you go to that page there, it will reroute you to the trading workshops page. But we've added this extra bonus. I told you about the Options Profit Blueprint course, four DVDs plus a digital access to soak it in. You don't have to wait on it to arrive. You can actually start soaking it in online. And just click on that Options Profit DVD course. That's That alone is worth a lot more than $99. But what I'm doing here is basically slam dunking the value so you can just get started. The worst thing that you can do if you're not happy with your performance or think that you could probably operate at a higher level, I'm not going to put everyone on the spot and ask what percentage you feel like you're really maximizing your potential as a trader. But when I ask that question to my students, they start probably in the neighborhood of 50%. Some are hard on themselves and put less and some put more, but the reality is, is that there's always room for improvement. But usually as we go, they're quickly up to 80 to 85 and, and approaching 90% uh, kind of confidence in their ability and that they're getting good opportunity out of their idea flow, out of what you're looking for. That's what we're looking for is to help you to be a better trader over time. So 
Lots of great questions, lots of great feedback. I appreciate all the kind words. I want to thank Steve and his team for allowing me to share with you some of the things I've learned across my 24 years of trading, and hopefully, God willing, a lot more. Um, bottom line is that you know it's about you know really looking for the right opportunities. And frankly, if you've been trained to sell over bought markets, you're missing a ton of bullish opportunities. This will help you to retrain yourself to getting on the significant trends. You can still use it in conjunction with candlesticks and really take maximum advantage of taking your knowledge to the next level. I want to basically thank everybody for being with us. Great feedback. And again, thanks to Steve and his team. You all do a fantastic job with a tremendously engaged audience. Have a great evening, a great trading week, month, and years ahead. And I look forward to a number of you joining in on this super value. And again, if we're, after we sell out of the first uh, 40 or so on the hard good options profit blueprint here, just don't, don't blame me if you act later and we only have the digital left because that's what it will convert to is digital. But those that buy now get both the DVD and the digital. Take advantage of it before they're all gone. And thanks again. Look forward to seeing a number of you brand new in Monday's uh, trading room, the Big Trends room. All right, take care. Have a great evening and see you again soon. Thank you, Price, so much for joining us this evening and all the great information you shared.